Let's look at some new capabilities that we have with regard to stairs. We'll work in this building and look at several different stair configurations. Notice that we have a deck and a terrain, an entry door, and if I wheel around a little bit, you'll see over here that we have a raised floor with an invisible wall here to separate the room from this room. And we have another room here which also has a slightly raised floor. Let's wheel in. And note that you can now draw stairs in the 3D view. If you go to the Build menu to Stairs and click the Straight Stairs tool, then you can simply drag to draw the stairs. You can select them and you'll get a footprint on the floor. You can rotate them, change their width, and move them around. Make them longer. And you can draw a second stair section too. I'll press Escape and drag to draw another stair section. If you want to join them to form a landing, it's probably a good idea to get a really good top-down view, or at least very close to it. I'll select these stairs, and I can move them into position. I'll control drag and place them where I want them. And then I'm going to press escape and go back to the build menu and get to the stair command again. And now I can click between them in stair mode and create the landing. I can now select the landed stair system and move the entire stair system. I think I'll select the top section. Put the cursor on this handle. I can no longer control drag to curve the stairs. Instead I must use alternate edit behavior. I can alt drag or I can right drag to curve the stairs. And of course we can open the stairs and in staircase specification make the necessary changes to make the stairs configured to our building. You'll find the staircase specification dialog has changed a little bit, but essentially all the same functions are there. The style tab has changed perhaps more than any other. It's been reorganized to make it perhaps more intuitive. And there are a couple of new things here. In the top landing box, you can specify nosing at the top landing. And you can also specify a riser surface at the top landing, which means that the very top riser will actually go up underneath the nosing. And notice that Allow Wrap is checked by default for stairs. You can uncheck it and stairs will not wrap. But they'll wrap if this is checked and we'll look at that soon. There is a property missing from this dialog. We used to be able to say stair sections move separately. We can still do it, but we don't do it in staircase specification. Let's close this and go to Preferences for Architectural and you can specify that stair sections will move independently here. But if I don't check this, I'll be able to select any section and move my entire landed stair system as a whole. Let's close the 3D view and go back to plan. And you can now fillet and chamfer your landings. So if I select this landing and I double click the fillet tool to see what I have for a fillet radius, I'll put in 24. And then I can click on this edge. It looks like I'm going to get the dimension, so I'm going to press Escape. And now that I have the fillet radius, I'm going to select this edge, click the tool, and try to click that edge. And I'm getting the dimension. So I'll just simply move in closer and fill it again. Individual stair sections can have different line style and display line weights in the plan. Let's try and select this section. Now we'll open the staircase. We'll go to the line style tab and we'll change the line style to a dashed style. And the line weight is currently 25. Let's change this one to 50. And we'll click OK. And we can see the difference. Stair sections will also snap to objects on the reference floor. Let's turn on Reference Display and we'll see a wall here on the second floor. If I draw a stairs and they wheel in, it's already snapped to the second floor wall. Let's select it, pull it back, and notice as we bring it up it will snap again, provided you have object snaps on. I'll fill the window and let's move into these stairs. 
and I'll turn off Reference Display too. If you want to see objects underneath the stairs, you no longer use a layer to do that. Let me select the stairs, open them, and simply go to Fill Style and specify a transparent fill, and click OK. I'll press Escape, and you can now see the walls and the other fixtures underneath these stairs. Oftentimes, we want to draw stairs down from a deck simply to represent a stair going down to the grade. We no longer do that with the Shift key. That function's been removed. Instead, we use alternate edit behavior. So Alt-drag or right-drag, and you can draw the stairs down. And you also use alternate edit behavior, as we just saw, to curve them, Alt-drag or right-drag. Here we have two stairs connected to a landing. And we saw in the Style dialog that Wrap Stairs is checked by default. If I select this stair and I move it over so that it's within 6 inches of the corner, and I move this one over and it's within 6 inches of the corner, they'll wrap if they have the same properties. Keep in mind that landings can have their edges broken, and if you have a break in a landing edge, it will impair the wrapping capability. But if you have a clean landing, you can bring both sections to the corner and get this effect. Let's take a render floor camera view. The wrapped feature is not intended for stairs between floors, but it is intended for stairs between two deck levels on the same floor, between the terrain and a deck, or stairs on the same floor up to a single landing. You cannot have multiple stair subsections, and you cannot have curved stairs. Notice the center railing. You can remove it if you like. I'll go to Select Objects mode, and I'm going to select this stair and open it. And I'm going to Nulls and Balusters, and for this one I'm going to say Remove the Railing on the right. And now this stair has a different property than this, and they're not wrapping, but let's select this stair and open it and go to Nulls and Balusters and remove the railing on the left and click OK. Let's close the view and go back to plan. And we'll move in closer. I'll select this stair section, but I'm going to be real careful when I select it. I'm going to deliberately select it down here. That means that this selected end should move, keeping the other end anchored to the landing. And now I'll open the selected stair section I want to, for example, change tread width or the number of treads or both. Let's just change it to five treads and tab and click OK. And notice we've lost the wrap, but we have the five treads. And because we clicked down here, we've maintained the connection. So I'm going to select this stair at the bottom. This will be the moving edge. Open it and change the number of treads to five and click OK. And notice how they have wrapped again. Now let's look at the new stair tool, the one-click stairs tool. It's in here. We'll just simply click it. It's called click stairs. And if I put the cursor right here and click, I'm going to get a stair section that goes from the terrain to my entry door. Let's take a look in a render full overview. I clicked on the low side on the terrain edge close to the platform edge that I wanted the stairs to connect to. And Chief Architect made the one-click stairs. I think I can stretch them out in this view and get the railing off the door. This one-click stair system is not a feature intended for stairs between floors, say between the first floor and the second floor, for example. It is intended for stairs between two deck levels on the same floor, between the terrain and a deck, or for stairs on the same floor up to a different level. Let's go back to our floor plan. We'll wheel in over here near the deck and here where we have rooms at different levels. These floor heights are different, but they're on the same floor. Because we have a terrain near our deck, we can simply click here with the one-click stair tool and get a stair between the terrain and the deck. We can also modify the stair. If I select it, again I click down here, I'm going to open it 
I can change properties of this stair system. I'll lock the tread width, for example, and change the number of treads to 6, and click OK. And I still have a stair section that is connected between the terrain and the deck. And here is the raised room with an invisible wall separating this room from this room. If I click on the lower level, close to the platform edge, I can get the one-click stairs. They'll connect immediately. But let's try it here with this wall where I have the raised floor platform, but when I click, I get a dialog that warns me I can't do that. And the reason I can't do that is because in a wall that's not invisible or not a railing wall, you need to have a doorway opening. And that's all we need. So if I place a doorway here, and then I go back to my one-click stairs, I should be able to click on the lower level close to the platform edge and establish those stairs. They'll essentially go where you click, except if you're close to a corner or an end. So if I was close to the corner of the deck, or if I'm close to the end of this invisible wall, they'll snap and extend to the end of the wall or to the end of the corner if they're going to be within 12 inches of the end of the wall or the end of the corner. So these are some of the new stair capabilities in Chief Architect X1.